Does everything happen for a reason? That's something you'll hear people in spiritual circles often say. Everything happens for a reason. But the coronavirus pandemic gives us a chance to put a belief like that to the test. Do we really believe that? Does everything happen for a reason? You know, there's many folks who say that and believe it. And others say the exact opposite and believe it just as much. Does everything happen for a reason? Or do things just happen? If things just happen, then it's not necessarily for a reason, which means it's the opposite belief. If you are someone who believes that everything happens for a reason, then the response to that, that divine will being played out in whatever the events of life are, ought to be to trust. Maybe if you close your eyes and think about it, you really do believe it. That when, when offered the choice, does everything happen for a reason or does nothing happen for a reason? You're quite certain that everything happens for a reason. If that's true, then everything is God's will. No matter what it is, the coronavirus pandemic, the situations going on in your life, the current state of your health, the state of the world, all of it is part of a divine plan that we won't understand until much later in life. Honestly, probably not until heaven. If that is the case and that's the truth, then we just have to strengthen our trust. We have to surrender the need to understand and instead just accept what's happening is happening for a greater good exactly as it should. People who believe in this recognize that there is an inherent balance in the universe that's always maintained. So whenever one thing happens, something else shifts and adjusts. And so a person who believes that everything happens for a reason might look at the coronavirus pandemic as an opportunity to say, hmm, God is really trying to tell us all something. God is trying to adjust something in our culture. God is trying to reset us. God is trying to unite people. Or God is trying to create more character development in people. In that view, everything happens for a reason. But many others don't believe that. They believe that things just happen. There is a popular podcast that has a number of episodes posting often. It's by a Duke University professor, Kate Bowler, who herself has dealt with life-threatening cancer. And she has a podcast called Everything Happens, and the words for a reason are crossed out at the bottom. So the name of it is not everything happens for a reason, but everything happens. Interesting. She's a proponent of the other view that these things don't happen for a reason and that we shouldn't allow the ongoings of human life and all of the events of living in a universe on a planet, we shouldn't attribute all of that to God because then that means that God is responsible for some really horrific things and it's just not good or wise or true to say that God is involved in that. God gave all of us free will. And so things don't happen for a reason. They just happen. And if we believe that, then as people of faith, our response is a little different than for those who believe that everything happens for a reason. Our response is to dig down into our virtues and to bring them all out so that we can meet the challenge in front of us. Here's a good example of these two positions. Everything happens for a reason and nothing happens for a reason, right side by side. When a tornado hits an Oklahoma town and we see the devastating pictures on the news of all of these people's homes and possessions scattered all over the countryside, and we hear about a death toll that came about, we are presented with a question. 
Was it God's will that that tornado hit that particular Oklahoma town? And it is for a greater good, for a, a divine purpose that we won't understand this side of heaven, but that is not cruel, is not awful, is not even tragic. It's only tragic to our human sense of right and wrong, but that it's just part of a greater plan. The other view says, tornadoes don't happen because God wills them. They happen because God created a world where there are low pressure systems. And if, if the circumstances are just right, that low pressure can create a funnel cloud. And then that can come and cause great disruption wherever it occurs. If it occurs in the middle of a field, then great. But if it occurs in the middle of a village, then people are going to get hurt and lose their possessions. Life isn't fair. We were never promised that it would be fair. God doesn't do that to teach us a lesson. This Oklahoma town isn't spared while that one is attacked. It's not for a lesson. Things don't always happen for a reason. They just happen. And what the people of that town then must do is dig deeply into their faith and their virtues and help each other and get the supplies needed to rebuild their lives, to tend to the sick and the injured, to bury the dead, to comfort the grieving, and then to rebuild their lives together as one family. Both of those responses are faithful. But you can see that they come from a very different place. I know that I have been told many times in my life by people who want to comfort me, everything happens for a reason. And sometimes I think that could be absolutely true. I know that I've also been given different comfort as well. A parishioner one time gave me this plaque. God doesn't give us what we can handle. God helps us handle what we are given. Sometimes I'll point to this when I'm meeting with someone in my office and they'll say, oh, I love that. I believe in that with all my heart. In which case I'll say, well, then that means that it wasn't God who gave this to you. God is helping you handle it. But I know that the church I grew up in had a really cool pastor when I was growing up as a kid, Father Eugene McFarland. And Father McFarland said, God fits the burden to the back. In other words, you've heard it said another way. God doesn't give us more than we can handle. Some people would say, that's not true. I've seen lots of people crumble under the loads they were given. God doesn't give us what we can handle. God helps us handle what we are given. Sometimes I find that this conversation comes up for someone when they go through a big life tumult, something like a divorce. If you believe that everything happens for a reason, the person getting divorced might be tempted to say, you know, God needed us to come together to create our children. Those children could not have been created by any other two people. It was our exact combination of genes and spirits that God used to create these special children. And so it was for a reason. Other people might say, my, my abusive marriage was not for a reason. Life isn't fair. And I made a poor choice. Maybe because of low self-esteem or maybe because I was tricked. But my job now is to rebuild my life. Can you see how those two ways of looking at life operate completely differently in the way people of faith deal with things? The church does not require you to believe one or the other. That may come as a surprise because it's such a foundational question. But you'll hear spiritual teachers and authors speak on both sides of the issue. And there are scriptures that support everything happens for a reason and plenty of scriptures that support nothing happens for a reason, but God is with us in it. Sometimes you'll hear a homily where the priest or minister or preacher will say, let's say there was a tragedy and the minister preaching might say, you know, God 
is with us crying today. God didn't do this. God is grieving with us, and God is holding us and crying with us as we grieve. Perhaps when you hear a statement like that, you clutch your heart and you say, I know that is deeply true. But perhaps that message doesn't resonate with what you most intuit about life. Maybe the message that comforts you more is, hold on and trust because God has a plan and this is just one part of it and don't lose hope and don't for a second believe that God will let you go. These are hard questions, but I'd like to propose this to you. Is it possible that both are true at the same time? They seem opposite, and they are. Everything happens for a reason, and nothing happens for a reason. But is it possible that perhaps they are both true because in God's realm, in heavenly space and time, which is not like our space or time at all, things that appear to be opposites can coincide. You know, our religion has been getting us ready for truths like that our whole lives. It's called paradox. The definition of paradox is two things that are simultaneously true, even though by definition they should cancel each other out. We deal with this all the time. Every Christian does. Jesus was fully God and fully human. Jesus was not 50-50. He was not like my Toyota Prius, like a hybrid. He wasn't someone who was half human and half divine, and when he needed his divine powers, he could shift into gear the way a hybrid engine uses electricity until it needs the gas. That's not how it worked. He was 100% human and 100% God. But that's impossible, you say. That's a paradox. People of faith have to wrestle with things like that all the time. We go to church and we receive the Eucharist, which looks and smells and tastes like bread. We drink the blood of Christ, which looks and tastes and smells like wine. But while it contains the outer elements of bread and wine, it contains the essence. It contains the substance of God. It is God, body and blood, soul and divinity, while still appearing to be bread and wine. But that's impossible, many people say. Those can't both be true at the same time. But yes, yes, we are being called all the time to enter into paradox. So, is the coronavirus pandemic God's will or not? Is this happening for a reason? Or is, is there no reason it's just happening? Did God allow this because we can handle it? Or does God not give us what we can handle? God helps us handle what we're given. Perhaps that's a good place to conclude because it doesn't matter which of those two you believe. God is with you in either one of them. Whether everything happens for a reason or whether nothing happens for a reason, God is with us in it all. On Good Friday, Jesus' death appeared to be for no reason at all. And yet we now know how beautiful, how beautiful the shedding of that blood was for what it meant for the world. We call it Good Friday, the worst day that ever happened. Welcome to Paradox. Let's try to walk faithfully together, trusting in God and accepting the virtues that we need to call upon to live our best lives right here and right now with the challenges of today.